let's use X-ray to work with some climate data. Typically, climate data comes in formats like NetCDF or GRIB, very hard to work with in GIS environment or can manipulate them. But X-ray was designed specifically for such data set, and it makes working with this really large gridded raster data set data time series very easy. So let's see how we can use X-ray to work with temperature anomaly data and create a map. First, let's make a copy of this notebook. We're going to use the data set from GISTEM, which is a, a widely used climate data. They provide you with normalized data where they've computed temperature anomalies for years starting from 1880 to present. And it's a monthly data. So you have for every month, how, what is the temperature anomaly compared to a base year? The base year they're using is 1850 to 1880. So you'll see what was the temperature difference from what was measured in 1800s to current. And that is kind of people use it to study the long-term temperature changes. This data set has so much data. Imagine how much data you have every month for it uh, from 1880 up to present. And all of this data is squished into this one file, one NetCDF file, which you can work with. So NetCDF file can represent this multiple created data set. And you can read this using Excel. And as you read this in NetCDF file, X-ray will convert this into a data set and it will give you the structure which you are familiar with now. To create a map, we're going to learn about this another library called Cartopy, which is one of the core libraries for geospatial visualization which allows you to work with different projections much easier. We saw with GeoPandas, you can do reproject the data and plot it. That's fine for vector data set, for raster data, especially gridded raster data set. Reprojecting data is very hard because they do, typically don't have the projection in the same sense that we are used to with the GIS data. So if you have gridded raster data, the easiest way to visualize it in a projection is using Cartopy. We're going to download this NetCDF file. This is a NetCDF file containing the temperature anomaly data from 1880 to present at monthly time step intervals. Climate data typically is very low resolution. This one is, I think, two degrees. So we have one value for every two degree grid. And that's the whole data set. Let's open the data set. We have imported X-ray. By convention, we import X-ray as XR. And we can just open the data set using XR. So we can say XR.open data set and give the path to the NetCDF file. And it just comes out as an X-ray data set. Let me just show you what it comes out as. So we have, it comes out as an X-ray data set. You can see we have a structure that we are familiar with. We have latitude and longitude dimensions, time dimensions, 1700 time steps for this data every month since 1880. And we have this variable, so there's a time band, so just some metadata which is stored as a variable, which we don't want. So the main variable that we want is the temperature anomaly. So we go and select that using the dot convention and we get our data array, which is gridded values of temperature anomaly for all time steps since 1880, 15th Jan, all the way till 15th of May, 2024. We now have our data array with that long and time dimensions. We have monthly data. We want to work with yearly data. So the first thing we want to do is we want to say, I, we have data for January 1880, February 1880, all the way up to like May 2024. We want to aggregate it to yearly. Let's say, what was the average temperature anomaly for each year? So we use our group by syntax and say group by year. We say group by year. And then once you group images, you have 12 images per year. What do you want to do with them? We'll say, give me the average value across time. And now we get this, this will be our yearly anomalies. So now we have reduced our temporal dimension from 1700 values to 145. So 145 years of data for each of those lat long values. And you can see those values. The values are degrees Celsius anomalies. So this says this pixel had 3.66 degrees anomaly compared to the base year. Yeah, that's what the values are. So you have positive or negative values for temperature anomaly. And this is what X-ray was designed for. This kind of temporal aggregations, super easy to do. And again, you don't have to iterate. You can just specify the time interval you want to group by and how do you want to group them. Let's plot this data. We have data for 145 years. Let's take one of the years and say, how was the temperature anomaly in 2023? Let's visualize that. We select the year and 
we have a yearly data we use cell and say the year value so we have aggregated we have this year dimension we got values such as 1880 1881 and so on so we can specify one of those integer values and say select by that value and we can select it for 2023 and now we have our two dimensional array which was the temperature anomaly in 2023 at each of those grid points let's visualize this we have x-ray so we can just use the im show method to show that array on a plot create a plot and just show this let's see what the default visualization looks like this is what the data looks like you can kind of make out the the continents and the region you can see the polar regions were much hotter than usual in 2023 you get a color bar which says you know this data has anomaly from minus four degrees to plus four degrees this is okay but we can kind of improve the visualization a little bit by adding some min max parameters so instead of going from minus four to plus four which are the actual min max we say let's just restrict to minus three to plus three we'll just select the color bar the default color bar is blue to red which is fine for climate data visualization so we'll just keep that and this is the default color map the cool one we'll just say show me the data from minus three to plus three and now this is what our data looks like decent visualization but again not very informative this kind of global data sets don't belong on a flat map like this it looks great or it can visualize this on a globe or in a globally relevant projection so while we can visualize this here the best way to visualize it it is in an appropriate projection and that's where we cartopi comes in so we'll now use cartopi and say we have this x-ray data set can we plot it on a specific projection and visualize this data on a globe? Pi is mainly used to plot data on a specific projection. It is also built on top of matplotlib. So you can use matplotlib and Cartopi allows matplotlib to be aware of projections. You have a bunch of projections that it supports. So if you want to use any of those, you will be able to use this. If you want to visualize the data on a globe, we can use an orthographic projection which is a globe view. So you can say, I want an orthographic projection with a central longitude and a central latitude. If you give zero, that is centered at zero degree at the equator, zero degree in the central meridian. You'll get a view like this. And you can kind of change this to kind of get a specific view of the globe. And once you create this, what you'll get is a matplotlib plot aware of how the projection is there and what's the coordinate space that's available here. We start our visualization first by defining what projection we want. So right now we want this orthographic projection centered at the zero degree X coordinate, which is the zero degree longitude at 30 degree latitude. And we create a matplotlib plot. So typically we just say plot subplot one one. Right now we give this extra keyword subplot keyword where you say projection equals this card to buy projections. Just this one parameter will say now the axis that I get is not a plane axis, not a plane plot. It's now a geo axis. A geo axis knows how to deal with projections. If you give it some data and say, show it in this projection, it can reproject the data and plot it at appropriate place. So we use a matplotlib as usual, but specify this so that we are now able to use projections. Once we do this, the geo axis object has this extra parameter that you need to specify. Whatever you're plotting, you have to give this transform parameter says, I want to plot this on this axis. This axis is in a specific projection. What is your source projection? So I need to always say my data is in this projection. The data that our climate data comes in is regular 4326, which is the plate carry. So we say our data isn't just lat long, transform it to the projection and plot it there. Let's run this and see what you get. You get this data on a globe much better than on a flat map you can actually see what different things are you can change the location so i can say i want it to be maybe let's say 60 degrees you'll get a different view of the globe you can show whatever you're interested in and change the projection to whatever you want let's make the plot a little bit better cartopi also comes with a lot of helper functions one of the functions you get is once you have a geo axis you can add some reference data. Typically when you are showing stuff on the globe, you want to know, get the outline of the continents just for reference. 
you can read some data using GeoPandas and plot it, but Cartopy also has this function called ax.postlines. The first time you run it, it's going to say, I'm going to download some data. It's downloading this data from the internet, some coastline data, and just plotting it here. You can see it just plotted some coastline on top of this. Next time you run it, it's already there, so it won't give this message. But you can see now we have the coastline. We can kind of visualize this data in relation to the continents. There's also a, a base map function, which loads a low resolution natural earth base map if you don't have any base map to plot your data on. So there are some helper functions to ease our plotting. We have this really long color bars we, that's kind of distracting. Let's make fix our color bar. We have this parameter called C bar, KWRs. This is our color bar arguments. So you can say, I will give some extra parameters on how to configure a color bar. Let's define our color bar parameters. We can define them as a dictionary. One of the things we can do is orientation. So since I want my color bar to be horizontal, not vertical. So you can see it became a horizontal one. There are other parameters. The color bar is too big. I don't want it to be too big. I can shrink it. There's a fraction parameter and again, some other parameter to kind of make the color bar nicer. This says, give me a smaller color bar. It's a fraction of the overall figure. So you can see it's much smaller color bar. At the bottom, you have a title, and now it looks much nicer. We can also change the size to be a little bigger so that you can see this data in much better clarity. And now it's very easy to create globe maps like this. If you take any data, you can plot it on this geo axis, and it'll just be transformed to that. You can take a GeoPandas data frame called dot plot, and just give this extra parameter transform and you can plot it on top of this. So any vector data can be plotted on top of this just as easily. You don't have to reproject them yourself. Cartopy will do the reprojection under the hood. One note on, should you use just GeoPandas, reproject it and plot it, or should you use Cartopy? Under the hood, they're doing the same thing. Cartopy is more easy when you have raster data. Since, you know, reprojecting raster data can be painful. If you have vector data, it takes the same amount of time, same computation, plotting this would be the same. For many global projections, it's just easier to use Cartopy because they have those predefined. If you have a projection, a specific projection with some EPSG code or some parameters, then you can just reproject it using GeoPandas and just use plotting API from there. So vector data, I generally more gravitated towards just using GeoPandas and plotting there. For raster data, I typically go the Cartopy route and plot it on that. But both are equally, choose which one works best for you. Under the hood, they're doing the same thing. They're using the same libraries and then plotting it on the same surface. Big now you can explain the exercise. Yeah, so the exercise is to display the same anomaly map in equal earth projection. We have list of projection for Cartopy here. So you can just explore this, find out how you can apply equal earth projection and generate this output and share your notebook. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, Equal Earth is a modern projection. This is an equal area projection, which preserves relative areas of continent. This is the modern projection that is suitable for global maps. You see the map behind me, that's an Equal Earth projection map. So if you're doing global maps, do not use any Mercator projection or 426. They do not preserve areas. So the correct projection to use for global maps is this Equal Earth projection. This is also the official projection for all NASA maps. So if you see NASA maps, they all use equal earth. So if you want not a globe, but a flat map, use equal earth. Orthographic projection is great. It only shows one hemisphere at once. So if you want to see the whole globe and you want a nice projection that preserves relative sizes of the continent, use equal earth. So the exercise is to explore and see how we can render this temperature anomaly on an equal earth projection like this.